Good afternoon, this is Lily Newman from Morgan James Consulting and welcome to another In the Hot Seat. And today, sitting in the hot seat, we have Richard Barnes, who's the Managing Director of Buffalo 7. Welcome, Richard. Hi, thank you for having me. Lovely to have you. Can you, just to kick off with, tell us a little bit about your business and maybe mention how we met? Sure. Well, I firstly, I had the, the privilege of, of meeting you on the fantastic Goldman Sachs 10K business uh, course, which revolutionized um, my thinking around how we operate as a business. So, yeah, that was a, it's a really good introduction. And from there, we've been able to, to work together. So Buffalo 7 is a creative agency that specializes in helping the world's best brands deliver next level presentations. We like to think we harness the chaotic energy of a raw idea and transform how the world experiences it. This is effectively our niche in the creative industry. It's our main focus and it's what makes us really experienced at what we do and helps us stay focused and able to expand on our experience all the time. I think what, what I've really seen is actually the quality of lot, what you deliver, but not just what you deliver, but actually the quality of your team, which is, is quite exceptional how you work so effectively together. And I wanted to talk to you particularly today about how do we get people into flow, whether it's in the pipe or in the zone, whatever you might call it. One of the things that I used to deliver uh, quite a bit of in terms of how do we get people into flow and the work of me high chicks and me high. And I know that when we worked on flow uh, in that particular program, it really resonated with you, didn't it? Can you can you just tell me a little bit about why? What was it that really touched you? So I have a, a really strong belief in we are smarter than me. It's a philosophy I've used for a long time and I am a very social person. I really like collaborating with people. We intentionally hire social people. We work open plan. Uh, mm -hmm. We're really good at collectively problem solving. So that's always been a way that I've liked working. When I first saw Flow and I, I saw the, the, the video with it, it, it just really hit a huge note for me of this this is fantastic. So how do we work together really well as a team? And it mm -hmm. really helped me start to think that we are a team that's very emotional and we work really well as a group, but there's more to it than just emotion. Um, it, it was like we're all playing in a band, but no one knows what song we're singing. And it just really hit a huge note for me. And I saw my business in a very, in a very different way. It really highlighted to me that there's two very important parts to business emotion and strategy. I think there's something yeah, that really awesome. resonated with me in terms of when I first started to look into the theory of flow. How do we get people in that zone where they are absolutely almost in a state of ecstasy this this total clarity on what they're trying to achieve they lose sense of time they are not necessarily aware of what's going on around them but but you've really got that in the pipe being at your creative vest and i remember reading about the founder mihai Cech semi high um, when he was a small boy living in budapest during the second world war and I think it was that, that they were under German occupation at the time and the Russians were advancing from the east and there was a real sense that the city was going to be raised. Mm -hmm. and so it was that, that his mother took this 10 year old boy and sort of crammed him onto a train at the train station and he waved goodbye to many, many people that were, were staying mm -hmm. to try and sit it out and survive what was just about to happen. And, and I just remember his reflection of those probably 100 people that he knew that were on the platform within three months 70 percent of them were dead and he really wanted to understand motivation and in trying to find this as he grew older and older he studied many religions he studied philosophy and he couldn't find the answers and in, in fact i was only recently that that i discovered that he was in switzerland and he had no money he had skis but they had no snow and he didn't, he couldn't afford to go to the cinema. So he thought, what will I do? And he saw this, uh, this flyer for a talk from a local lecturer. And he went in, it was about flying saucers, apparently. 
that he was going to this talk for. And as he listened to the lecturer, the lecturer was talking about the fragile psyche of Europeans since the Second World War. And actually, how do we reconnect with that, that motivation? And it came from Carl Jung. He discovered he was in uh, the lecture hall of Professor Carl Jung, the famous psychologist. And so he developed this piece of work on flow. But I'm, I'm interested to know from your perspective, what does flow mean to you? So I think flow means to me having a real sense of purpose and then knowing how to focus. Because once we know where to push that energy towards, we can perform really well. People just really like to know what is it that I've got to do with this energy. And I think when you harness that, it works really well for your business. So I'm really interested in it because it's, it's a fascinating area to understand what it makes individuals uh, passionate about what they're doing and helping people getting into flow is something I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. So it's an individual thing, but it's very much a company thing as well. You've got to, you've got to get a sense of the flow of your business, but also um, as an individual as well. So it, it is a really interesting area, but yeah, for me, it's very much about helping people have that, that purpose and that focus. And that's what gets people into flow. And I, I think that critical thing for us, which is obviously where we come from, from a Morgan James perspective, is, is actually how do we make sure that people have got that skill and that capability? And balancing that with support and challenge is absolutely crucial, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. One of the things I, I know that you've always advocated, and that is uh, that continuous personal development and training. And, and, yeah. and how in these particularly difficult days, when we look at, People are cutting budgets. People are worried because of COVID of, of this past year. How do you balance that? Because you are still absolutely committed to that. How do you how do you make sure that you balance the books and put that investment into your people too? Yeah, it's a really good question because obviously this year has been really challenging for a lot of businesses, um, as ourselves included. And I think that's where you've got to keep the communication going with your team to provide the clarity so that they still can harness their energy. They've still got the, the sense of purpose and the, the focus, the strategy. What are we doing this for has to be clear. And mm -hmm. the strategy changes and change is exciting. Change does bring us exciting opportunities. Understanding what that means is really important for individuals. And I think once you start talking to people about it, you can then start to go, right, well, what, can we, what have we learned from this? How can we improve upon that? So you're using the, the problem all the time to find the positive, to find the learning, to find the opportunity. And learning and development doesn't have to be expensive. It can, it can be something that people can research, talk about, talk to peers. Obviously, um, if you can afford training, it is actually super beneficial because you're tapping into experts. It's very focused. But we've constantly developed our L&D um, around individual needs as well as team needs and we talk about it monthly or weekly it's a it's a it's a continual conversation what have we learned what are we learning so that we uh, we have that personal growth because when people are growing they're really in flow when people are have feel that they are bit, they're being valued by their agency that they're investing in them that they're excited about their growth you see a lot of progress with people's flow they become very engaged in what they're doing. I think that that's one of the things I loved about when we were working with your teams on step into management is this innate sense of curiosity. Yeah. Um, and, and it's one of those things I always say, recruit for attitude and train for skills. It's very yeah. difficult to train that curiosity, isn't it? But it, it's something that is foundational to your culture. Yeah. And, and I think we've talked about it before. You've found many benefits from that, haven't you? Absolutely. One of our values is explore. Um, we talk about it a lot. We, we reference it all the time. We want our team to be innovative. We're a creative agency. It's what we live for. So, mm -hmm. you know, by nature, we do like to, how can we make things better? How can we improve things? Um, you know, the step into management course is a great example where we've gone, what, what are we missing in our skill set? And then we've, we've start to develop those skills and those skills are transferable because people are talking about them and they're helping enable other people so that it goes back to that simple team culture that we want to make things better as a group and we support each other and we're very open to making mistakes 
being challenged, accepting that that feedback is all part of growth and helping each other to grow is fantastic. One of the things I see is that fear of failure, that fear of making mistakes, but actually it should be part of our DNA because if we're not making mistakes, we're not pushing ourselves. As, as Edison said, didn't he? I think he said, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that my light bulb won't work. Uh, and, and, I, and I love that philosophy. And you see that in Dyson as well. I think it was 3,000 500 um, prototypes that he had for his Dyson vacuum before he got the thing that was completely ready to come off the factory floor. Um, I'm really impressed by how you use that to grow and learn. And, yeah. and what I want to just bring you into is the flow diagnostic that we did whilst you were on the program. Yeah. Uh, this is obviously, a, it's sort of a, a, a mashup of our three agendas of leadership, the strategic agenda of what we're measuring, the emotional agenda, how engaged we feel and the behavioral agenda. That's the questions that, that gave us the foundation for the questions. But ultimately, we're still sticking with me high chicks and me highs, basic principles of flow and understanding where we are. I'm going to open up um, just a quick slide, if that's OK. And I'd really love you to talk us through uh, if you could just, Richard, talk us through what you found when you completed the questionnaire and when you were able to plot where your people were on the graph. What did you find when you did this with your team? So we, I started using the survey um, straight after Goldman. So really uh, straight away I used it and we found that we were in neutrality zone. We were somewhere around 25, 25. So somewhere we weren't bad. Um, and there was individuals who were obviously higher and lower, but we found that we were somewhere somewhere in that zone. And what I what I loved about the questionnaire is it it provides you with an insight into the health of your business, into the flow of your business. It it helps you unpick some things. It helps you ask questions, and it really helped us to hone in on where were the areas that we were failing our team. Where was the opportunities to to start to improve upon. And there were some really standout parts for us. And those are the things that we honed in upon over the last 18 months. And those are the things we've been improving time and time again. And, and slowly over the last 18 months, we've just gone up and up and up. And now we're comfortably in that flow zone. We set flow as a KPI for our business, for our individuals. Flow is talked about all the time as we want to be able to get people into that 32 over 32, we call it. That's the minimum we accept. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we focus on that and it's a, it's a constant kind of conversation and it allows us to, uh, to progress through that. So, yeah. Just to let me just to explain a little bit about this. So we have uh, 20 questions that measure your performance between this does not sound like me at all. You score naught or this is absolute me and I behave like this all the time. You score four. Yep. And those questions are based around the three agendas of leadership. So they are based on the strategic agenda. How are we, and that is, how are we measuring what we're achieving? What are the processes that we're using? What are the metrics that we're using? So that we've got a real understanding whether people feel that they're engaged in their goals, that they can see and feel progress. Then we look at the emotional agenda, which is the agenda that says, actually, what does it feel like to work in this business or work with this business? How motivated and inspired am I when I come to work each day? How close am I to what Mihai Chekseng Mihai uh, talks about, that state of sort of ecstasy, ecstasy and fulfillment? And then we look at the behavioral agenda. What are the behaviors that are expected of me? What are the behaviors that I'm utilizing and my team are utilizing, which underpin our values? And obviously the higher you score, uh, particularly if we look at, so we've got a block of questions that sit, um, are, are the x-axis axis question, which takes you uh, from bored to excited, which is really relates to the challenge that you have, the level of challenge you have in your business. It's no good just giving people more and more challenge, particularly in the, cha in the challenging environment we find ourselves in, though. We have to really focus on balancing that up with support. The support is the part that Mihai Csikszentmihalyi talks about, which is the, that development of that skill set so that people feel that they've got a safety net, that they can be really pushed, but actually they've got somewhere to go if they need to develop and evolve the skills to achieve what's being asked of them. Yeah. So that's it. The, if we look at, look at shifting up the X axis, 
uh, across the x-axis that is all about how do we give people new opportunities and clear goals how do we make sure they have a sense of achievement independence opportunity to to learn and grow and that responsibility that makes them feel challenged but not without taking them up the y-axis from worry to controlled which enables them to have familiar experiences and space to play praise and feedback belonging and security and freedom from too much pressure uh, which for me is about setting, really helping to set your own goals and having that relationship of support. Now, how, when you're trying to build your business, Richard, do you create the conditions so that people can set their own goals in tandem with what you're trying to achieve? How do you create that? It's, it's really important to involve people in goal setting. They need to feel part of the process. I think the first thing you've got to do is talk about what are the goals of the business and then start talking with them around how they can contribute their skills towards that, where we feel that they will operate in terms of their performance levels and, and talk to them about what sort of levels that you're trying to achieve. Talk to them about the behaviors that will enable that to happen. You've got to take them on the journey. If you simply set people goals, they will, they will fail because they don't understand the journey that they need to go on to get to that point. It's extremely important that you involve them in that and make them feel that they're contributing to that and that you regularly talk about that so that they're able to see progression. You're able to nurture that person towards that goal. You're able to give feedback. They're able to feed back to you. So it has to, you have to go on an individual journey with those people when you're setting goals. And I would also stress that those goals change because yeah. things change all the time as well. So as long as there's clear communication, people feel like they're being listened to, which is extremely important. People like to be given that strategic goal at the beginning, but they want to feel part of the journey to get to it. When people have the autonomy, they tend to deliver way above what you expect because they feel that they've been given the responsibility and permission to challenge it and to, and to enjoy that process of trying to deliver it. So it's a really important part to work with people on setting goals. I think I think that's that that really critical piece, isn't it? That sense of ownership that people get. Um, the thing that I, I really like as well, and, and I know we've discussed this in terms of your strategy, and you came out with your growth plan at the end of the Goldman program, is that, that actually helping people to really see where do they sit inside the business yeah. and how does what they do even if they're the cleaner, how does that relate to achieving your growth vision and where this business is going? That, that purposeful behavior is completely essential, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the fundamental thing that I discovered on the first survey was that we had a huge amount of, of positive energy in the team. People were really enjoying what they were doing, but they didn't know why. We did, we'd never set a strategy as in what, what are we trying to achieve in the long term? Um, and, and to be honest, that's where Goldman Sachs came in. It gave me a chance to think about what are we trying to achieve? We were able to then put down a plan that people can then start to align to. And it made a lot of difference. Once you've got a plan, you can start building out individual goals. You can build out department goals. You can start to set targets. Everybody gets that it's a plan and it can change, but at least we now know where we're going. And we saw our biggest shift in flow from a lot of people who just wanted to know what what do you need from me what how can i help right that's what i'm aiming at great now i'm going to put all my energy into that so it it, it was the fundamental thing for us is that that element that was missing from us in the butterfly we had a huge wing that was the emotion and a tiny wing that was strategy and finding the balance between the two yeah. is, um, is where you find flow and that's, of course, of course, where you're and we'll talk about this on, a, on another program, but this is where the value building behaviors, those real clarifying what's our purpose? What are we trying to achieve here? Where are we going as a business contracting? What's your responsibility? What are you picking up? When can you do that by that support and challenge balance that we see through flow that tied in with your open open questions you know getting really good not just at, at uh, asking great questions but really observing what's happening with your staff because very often it's those micro behaviors that tells you when there are problems isn't it yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's nipping those in the bud earlier on is really crucial but just before we come off of this and and I just want to state that for anybody who would like 
um, the diagnostic that goes with this, we're very happy to email you uh, the, the, the flow questionnaire, the flow details and how to use it so that you can use this as a snapshot. It's like a one page snapshot of how's your how are your individuals or your team doing? I did want to ask you how did things change during COVID? Did we retest people? Did we get a sense of, of, of whether we were out of flow and maybe into the stress zone? What happened for you? Yeah, we've continued to do it on a regular six month basis. So we're able to see how things were going. Amazingly, we've actually improved our flow score um, through COVID. I think because of our culture uh, was so strong, We've been building upon that and the communication from leadership was very much, this is the strategy, this is what we're doing. We, we kept communicating and we continue to build upon that. So people just always know where we're going. And that was the thing I think we, the mistake of the past is that we, we weren't communicating enough. So by that regular updates to the team of where we are, keeps things settled in terms of where, where we're going. It just keeps them in flow. Um, so yeah, amazingly, we've actually improved our flow. Right now, we're flying. I mean, it's um, in terms of the energy in the team, everyone's feeding off each other's flow as well, which is fantastic. Um, one thing I do here when I go into leadership teams and and we start to work with new businesses um, or new to us, anyhow, is I often hear leaders say we can't tell the rest of the staff because we don't want to unsettle them. Yeah. But if, if they get a sense that there's change and they don't understand why there's a burning platform, you know, what, what is this change all about? And I'm talking about pre-COVID rather than COVID. COVID, everybody had to change and everybody understood why pretty quickly. There was shock, but we yeah. didn't go through that denial and blame piece. Everyone to shock to acceptance. If we're going to survive, we've got to do this. But actually that openness is critical, isn't it? That ability yeah. to help people to recognise why are we changing? Where are we going? And where do you sit in, into this is absolutely crucial. Personally, I think change is really exciting. It gives us a lot of opportunity, as we've seen this year, even a bad situation, you can find the positives in it. That's not the same for everybody. Some people don't like a lot of change. It flusters them. They can they get very unsettled. And I think this year is a really good example of a, when there's a situation which makes people nervous the, the importance of communication there is to help go well and help them understand well this what what's the opportunity here that we are making the most of what are, what can we do how can we help you understand the situation the negative i suppose in the past that i've made is if i make too many changes at once for the team i'm introducing too many things too many ideas and people are you know they maybe slow down rich as some of the feedback i get <laughs> i've taken that on board and i've said to the team I'm going to slow down on some of the things that I'm introducing into the team and ideas. I just get very excited about new opportunities and, and ways of working. So um, it's about um, it's about managing change. I think it's really important, but explaining why we're doing these things is uh, is really critical as well. I love it when I interview you because there's always half a dozen, well, normally a few dozen post-it notes and they're on, I know they're on your cupboard and I know they're on your front wall as well. You yeah. have more ideas before lunchtime than most people have in a year. Uh, but that's the critical thing, isn't it? To recognise that often with those ideas, we've planned them out, we've thought about them, we've looked at consequences, we've thought about risk in our heads and then we go to implement. But at yeah. the implementation phase, that's often the time when our staff, that's the first thing that they've heard about it. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we do this in a measured way so that they can play catch up as to what's going on in your brain. And yeah. like uh, I know happens sometimes, as you said earlier on, for people to go, whoa, Richard, hang on a minute. <laughs> 16 yeah. ideas at once does not work. Yeah. Now, one thing I do want to ask you about, because I often hear when I talk about uh, the emotional agenda and the behavioral agenda and how do we bring people with us yeah. I get the criticism of that's all well and good that's really fluffy stuff Lily but actually what about the numbers and driving profit what about the metrics surely we're here to make money how would you respond to that well that's obviously that's your, your, your two parts are very important and need to blend together and I think that's why you've got to find the balance because Simply just having the goal does not provide the, the emotion and the purpose to, to get you to that goal. You, you've got to have the, the, the right mix there where you've got, you've got some of those important numbers for people to focus on, but there's got to be, you've got to build in the behaviors that are going to make that happen. You've got to 
create the right environment for people to want to do that for the mm -hmm. business. Just having a number on a wall doesn't get you there. You've got to create the energy in the team. And that's why it's important. You've got to find that balance. And that's why the, the value building behaviors are so important as well. How do we do that? We've got this energy. We've got the idea. The middle bit is the critical bit of how we're going to work as a team to do that. How are we going to manage the people in the team to achieve those results as well? So there's a, there's a lot of work to do in the middle. Simply just putting a number on a wall does not make it happen. No, absolutely. absolutely. And um, I think this is the other thing that comes out comes out of flow as well it's not necessarily about how much you pay people if if you listen to dan pink and uh me high they will say all you need to do is look at actually what's the going rate for the job and just pay a little bit more not a lot more not no, you know nothing massive but it is actually how do we help people to find their purpose their drive their connection with your intention so that they will put their energy behind those intentions Absolutely. now now you mentioned earlier on that that buffalo is doing really well and, we, and of course we've uh, just come out literally just come out of second lockdown yeah. uh, what do you think it is that's, that's made the difference that you've been able to ride this so well over the past few months i think we we're, we're good at talking to each other and, and talking about what how we can improve things so the team are very good at, at problem solving the team are good at thinking creatively around the problems that we're looking at i think we've been able you know through lockdown to really consider what services we're offering focus double down on the services that are working really well we're not afraid to say that doesn't work and move on to something that does i think the the people are really fighting for our business because they believe in it and they're really excited about what we're doing. So it's been about fostering that energy and maintaining a sense of what, where are we going? Just keeping that, keeping us on track to do that. Um, we do a lot of one-on-ones as managers with our team and thanks to the training that we've received through, uh, through you guys, we've been able to make sure our managers are working really well at building those relationships with individuals. And one-to-ones are really great for digging into some of those flow questions to help people still continue to feel that sense of purpose. I think one of my favorite questions on the flow survey is I have time to focus on the most important parts of my job. And that's a question you're asked in flow. And it's a great question to kick off a one-to-one -one with. So you know, what do you feel are the most important parts of your role? What do you feel are the most important parts of your role? Get them to start talking about it. Get them to find out, are you spending enough time on that? What's stopping you doing that? Right, how do we resolve that? Because if you feel that's important to your role, let's make that happen. Does that align with the strategy of the business? Fantastic. Let's 80-20. Let's make sure you're focusing on that. What, you know, it's really useful as a way of helping them see maybe where they're getting distracted or they're seeing a shiny new thing. It's, it's probably the one of the best questions on it because you're allowing people to take responsibility what they feel are the most important parts of their role. And they'll often say the, the obvious things to begin with, but slowly they start to unpick some of the other things in there. And it's where you really start to have a one-to-one -one session where you can galvanize somebody, you can really lift them up. You can make them feel that they've got responsibility over how they spend their day. So they can start to prioritize better where they're spending their time. So you, you're able to re-energize people. You're able to find out what's worrying them. And that's where you kind of continue to nurture the flow energy that they have. Uh, so yeah, that's one of my favorite questions. I think this is where the value building behaviors really come into their own, isn't it? Where you can chunk yeah. down underneath the surface. I had, had a managing director came in here the other day and I, I could see there was nothing left in him. Totally no energy, walked, walked up, sat on the other side of my desk and I said, how are you? And he looked at me, he said, I'm fine. And I said, should we start again? I said, seriously, how are you? And, and I just saw him crumble. And we just spent the next hour unpicking what are the stuff that, what are the, the bits that he can control? What are the bits that he can influence? And what's the stuff he's got to let go of? Because yeah. it was literally, he felt like he was trying to hold together the economy. Yeah. Um, and, and I think this is the usefulness. It's, it's not necessarily just the questions, it's the creating the space in the day, in the week or the month to just get a snapshot from that person and to pick underneath the surface of it. That's really, really useful. Thank you for that. Um, critical thing, I just wanna talk about Buffalo 7 for a minute. 
because uh, you must be in high demand at the moment because we, we've got to market ourselves out of this, haven't we? Those that are going to survive are not going to survive by going, we're not spending on marketing, we're not spending on presentations, we're not spending on relationships. So yeah. just, just give me a, a, a little snapshot of what you can do to help other businesses at the moment to help them through this recession. A lot of it is about clarity of communication. I mean, that's really where we specialize. It's helping people to get the message right for the audience, to helping them communicate really clearly what it is they're trying to say. There's obviously, it's quite difficult to have conversations at the moment, one-to-one. -one. Um, we've always felt presentations are just a great tool for staying on brand, being consistent, allowing everybody to be able to pre present professionally which mm -hmm. is a whole different thing from just simply putting some slides together we want people to feel confident when they're presenting we want people to feel that what they're producing is of high quality and it really helps them to to talk about the story that they're trying to express so yeah we found we've been very busy with helping people still continue to deliver those high quality presentations uh, to people across virtual platforms such as what we're on now it's um it's a it's a really a big area for people storytelling. How do we how do we get this message right when we have the opportunity to speak? Uh, and it's not easy. It isn't easy to get it to 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 produce that kind of quality content. But that's where we can help. We're we're a storytelling species, aren't we? It's what we love. It's why we go to the cinema. It's why we watch films. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's why advertising it. works. We enjoy it. And I think it's a, a lot of the time it's about helping people strip out the things they don't need to say and allowing them to focus on the things that are really important to their audience, not necessarily what's important to them. I think it's a real skill to uh, to be able to help people get to that point. But it's something that we, uh, we, we live for. That's what we love doing. Now, just to finish off with, with your highly motivated team, what yeah. is the one takeaway that you'd offer to other business leaders who might be struggling to help their team stay motivated at the moment? So I think one of the best things you can do is feedback to your team, especially on success, especially when things are tough, focus on the things that are going well. Uh, we talk to our team every Friday about what are the successes, what's working. We want to keep building up on the momentum of positive energy. You, you need to talk about the things that aren't going well, but those are for, uh, for one on one situations. You want to talk regularly with the team about building on success, focus again on what the strategy is, what we've had to do. Is it working? Yes, we're doing all the right things. You want to make people feel valued. You want to make sure that people get that feedback that what I'm doing has an impact on the business. So even little things, you want to celebrate it. But certainly any success stories you're getting through from clients could be an email, could be your NPS score, could be a great piece of work. Share it with the team, celebrate success. It's a great way of galvanizing the team. Um, if it's a really good success, do something as a team, whether it's an online cook along, whether you do a quiz, whether you just simply do a fancy dress competition. You want, it, you want people to feel like that was an enjoyable moment and let's build upon that as much as you can. So feedback is a, is a critical thing to do and you wanna make it part of your day that you constantly praise people. It's a really important aspect to keep people's flow going. It's looking at those, what we call them positive somatic markers, putting them in, in your brain of even though COVID was tough, we've yeah. stopped, we've down tools, we've celebrated, we've said, yes, that was fantastic. I think for me, it's, it's absolutely making sure we're doing that, but we're critically also observing. We're, we're listening to our people and we're observing what are the behaviours, what's changed so that we can have those personal one-to-one -one conversations where I say, we need, yeah, we need to sometimes give people a damn good listening to as opposed to a damn good talking to when they're struggling. Because you'll find if we find out what's underneath the surface, help them to put stuff on the table, they can then find their own way through it. But the listening, you have got a more important role if you are a leader of people in the business than almost every person that that person interacts with apart from their spouses or their kids. And I think you, uh, from everything that I've seen, Richard, in our working together, you're an exceptional leader. Thank you Thank so you. much for your time today. Absolutely no wonderful to meet you. Take care. Thank you.